G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today, I want to introduce you to what's possibly one of the most bizarre mammals on the planet. And that'd be this beautiful girl here, the short-beaked echidna. So stick around. They're pretty dangerous. Take all Wicked Wildlife encounters. This is telling her. So, first of all, many people are unaware that there's actually four species of echidna. In Australia, we've got this girl here, the short-beaked echidna. But up in Papua New Guinea, you've got the eastern long-beaked echidna, the western long-beaked echidna, and David Attenborough's long-beaked echidna. And despite their prickly appearance, they're actually not related, as people might believe, to things like hedgehogs or porcupines. These guys are what we call monotremes. There's three sort of groups of mammals, I suppose. You've got the marsupials, who all have pouches. The placental mammals, like people, horses, cats, dogs, pigs, that sort of thing. And uh, then you've got these guys, the monotremes. So there's these four echidna species, and the other one is the platypus. Now, the thing that makes the monotremes different from our other mammals is these guys not only have pouches, like the marsupials do, but monotremes actually lay eggs. In fact, even the name echidna, comes from the fact that these guys are so different. You see, the word echidna was actually the name of a creature in Greek mythology that was meant to be half woman and half snake. Now, this has sort of become a symbol of being half mammalian and half reptilian. And these guys here, suckling their young on milk like a mammal, but laying eggs like a reptile, are the embodiment of that mythical creature. So the name echidna has stuck ever since. As far as diet goes, the short-beaked echidna lives pretty much entirely off ants and termites. Now, it finds these using tiny electrical sensors in their nose, which pick up the electrical currents of living things, just like sharks do. Now, as far as m mammals go on Earth, uh, only the echidna and the platypus have the ability to detect these little currents. So it's pretty unusual. Once she finds the ant nest or the termite mound, they've got these powerful claws, and they literally use it to rip the termite mounds apart and they've got a really long sticky tongue that they used to get all the way in there and pull out mouthfuls of ants at the same time. Now to run an animal like this, she's got to eat an awful lot of ants. So she'll go from termite mound to termite mound and basically once she leaves they repair it, they try and recolonize and uh, when she's hungry again she'll come back for another feed. Now the most interesting thing about these guys is by far their reproduction. Like I said, being a monotreme, these guys lay eggs but it's a bit more complicated than that. To start off with, the short-beaked echidna's breeding season runs from June to September, and after they've bred, these guys have a gestation of only 22 days. After that, these guys lay a single egg, which weighs only about two grams, but in the case of the echidna, they lay this egg directly into their pouch. 10 days after being laid, the egg will hatch into what we call a puggle, and uh, it continues to stay in the pouch for another 55 days or so while it starts drinking milk. Now, as all mammals do, these guys produce milk for their offspring, but monotremes, echidnas and platypuses, actually lack nipples. So milk literally seeps through pores in the skin and the babies have to lap it up. After these 55 days, that baby starts to develop some pretty serious spines. So mum actually leaves that baby in like a nursery burrow and she'll come back every five to seven days to feed it. It's a really good example why it's important if you find an echidna on the road, not to pick it up and take it too far. Help it off the road or put your hazard lights on so people know it's there until it gets away, but you don't want to take them too far because if she's got a baby in a little nursery burrow and you take her 10 k's down the road, that poor baby might starve to death without mum. So it's really important to leave these guys where they are. Now that little echidna will actually continue to drink milk off mum for up to seven months and it won't be independent for up to a year after being born. So it's a pretty big commitment being an echidna mother. One more really interesting fact about echidnas and monotremes in general is these guys have a far lower operating temperature than other mammals do. We run at something like 36 or 38 degrees and uh, the monotremes, like the echidna, have a body temperature of somewhere around 33 degrees, which is probably a throwback to their sort of reptilian way of life. Despite being mammal, these guys are about as ancient and reptilian as the mammal family really gets. So they're really amazing, really bizarre animals. So all things considered, I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find a more bizarre mammal than the short-beaked echidna. They're pretty amazing animals, and I'm sure that you guys will all agree. But that being said, 
As always, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video, and if you haven't already, please like our Facebook page or subscribe to our YouTube channel wherever you're watching us. And if you want to become involved in helping us bring our videos out more regularly and visit more animals, check out our Patreon account, patreon.com forward slash Wicked Wildlife, where you can help our videos get bigger and better every single week. Other than that, guys, uh, I'll let you go on your way, and as always, have a good one and take care.